Hello everyone and welcome once again to ThursDev. I am your host Luke and today I would like to continue our exploration of game balance with an exercise in simplicity. Game balance itself is a vast and difficult topic to even begin to breach the surface of, so I wanted to start off by looking to the words of one of the most well-respected designers in simulation and strategy game history, Sid Meier. Today we'll take a brief look at a game balancing style that, while in practice is extremely simple, is still stage wisdom that has helped me many times over the course of my career. Today I'd like to explore the Sid Meier method. If you aren't already familiar, and if you're a gamer you should be because his name is on everything he creates, Sid Meier is, first and foremost, a legend of game design that if you have any interest in working in design you should familiarize yourself with. He was one of the co-founders of Microprose and later Firaxis, both of which primarily created simulation games in the 1980s and onward. He's had a hand in somewhere in the range of 50 games, including notably Sid Meier's Pirates, Railroad Tycoon, Alpha Centauri, and all of the Civilization games, including the recently released Civilization VI. His works are both iconic and prolific, and he's also, in the game development space, credited as the man who coined the phrase finding the fun, which is a principle of exploratory iteration, making changes to a project with the intent on making the best and most player-focused game possible. Though there are many lessons that he's taught us, the designers of the newer generations, over the course of his career, today I'm planning on focusing squarely on his credo of game balancing in iterative design, double it or cut it in half. What does that mean? Well, the most basic principle is that when tuning values, don't waste time. Don't tweak and fiddle with minor changes. Double it or cut it in half, then you can zero in on your ideal zone from there. Well, you would assume that a strategy game is going to be a large amount of very minor bits of fine tuning. Finding a perfect balance through small changes is usually arduous and in many cases far too time consuming to be practical. In an iterative game development project, you'll frequently test something imperfect and need to fix it over a number of iterations, but time is finite. You can only spend so much time on one thing, so it makes little sense to make tiny adjustments unless you've already tested on a larger scale. The Sid Meier method of balancing is simple. If something seems like it's not enough, double it. If it's too much, cut it in half. It's not a matter of finding the right value on the first pass, it's seeing how far you were from the mark. According to Sid, the original Civilization's gameplay had a tendency to slow down to a painful crawl, which was solved by cutting the map size in half. Other examples were given like cutting a number of upgrades in half when they became too overwhelming for the player. Brave or foolhardy, the man has made a dynasty around his design philosophy, so he must be onto something. Now, I freely admit to being a game mechanic micromanager. I can't help it. I have a tendency to get myself lost in the minutia of a mechanic that I'm working on. I like to think that it isn't a failing. I've been lauded for my thoroughness in design in the past, but as someone who works on games under a self-imposed microscope all the time, it's easy to lose sight of a bigger picture and want to keep everything very tightly controlled. Frequently turning back to the Sid Meier method gives micromanagers like me a nice and well-deserved slap and asks us to stop making minuscule twists of individual cogs whose results will be so similar with each iteration that very little real subjective data can be gathered. The fun is ignored in favor of statistical or mechanical perfection when, in the words of one of another of Meyer's design principles, the player should have fun, not the designer or the computer. We may enjoy creating deep, involved algorithms and sophisticated internal simulations, but as beneficial as those can be, if they're opaque to the player or produce results that are in the eyes of the player unreliable or indecipherable, then we've succeeded as creators of simulations and algorithms, but we're neglecting the game part of game design. But back to balance. When designing, sweeping changes can be frightening and frequently we feel as though we've already come close to the right spot with our existing values. You have to understand that as designers, there's a little bit of ego and desire not to be far from the right area from the start. But in the name of speed and efficiency, the Sid Meier method tells us to avoid the trap of small adjustments. Don't lower a unit's cost by 5%, double its attack power. If something in your game costs too much, cut its cost in half and see how much better that feels. You can find a balance between from there. If a weapon's too weak, double its damage value and see if it's better. It'll probably be too powerful, but you can scale back from there. 
but maybe it doesn't. Or maybe you should double its speed so it does more DPS. This cuts down significantly on time and energy, and that's the point. Though it's something of a brute force method, it works wonders. I know that I've spent days working on tuning in-game variables to get a game's economy to work correctly before, even when employing the Sid Meier method. The process on its own is already arduous work, which doesn't need to be exacerbated by constant minor tweaks that give you no real appreciable feel for how much better a mechanic is after a large change from iteration to iteration. Of course, knowing what to cut or double is an art form all of its own. As with all video game design principles, there are always going to be an intricate web of interconnected systems that need to be considered when making major changes. You absolutely should tweak values that need it, but as a designer, we should be wary of what's going to be affected and avoid, whenever possible, power creep. But first and foremost, balance your game in a way that's fun, and don't waste valuable development time when you have a limited budget and schedule on the little things. Next week, we'll be looking at a technological and reactive approach to game balancing, born out of the ever-shifting nature of modern multiplayer gaming and sophisticated analytics tools. Please join me for the last episode of 2016 as we chase the meta. In the meantime, however, I just wanted to leave off thanking you as always for joining us here on ThursDev. This show is created to explore game design and development theory in a simple and practical way. I hope that you're enjoying it, and if you have any questions, comments, or requests for topics, please consider leaving a comment below. In the meantime, however, thank you as always for watching, and take care. <laughs>